so much for joining us today. I'm excited again and have another woman who's anointed, appointed, and called by God to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And she is none other than Apostle Patricia Lee Amon, and she is pastor of the Hub Gathering Revival Center in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Let me tell you something. I went and visited them the other night and revival is going on at the Gathering Hub. Yes, you need amen. to be there. Amen. There's a word from God and there's a power of God. We're gonna talk about that in the program today. Pat, thank you so much. Can I call um, you Pat on the show? Yes, sure okay. do. Because see, when we met, you were Pat Lee. Yes, everybody knows me by Pat Lee. Pat Lee from Picayune, Mississippi. Yes. But now you live in? Hattiesburg. And you are the pastor of? The Hub Gathering Revival Center. In Hattiesburg. Oak Grove. Oak Grove. It's in Oak Grove. In yes, Oak Grove. That's right. Pat, we got to bring the, the audience up to par now, to where we were then and where we are now. Amen. When did we first meet? Uh, we met back in, I think it was 2002 or either 2003. I'm mm -hmm. not really sure. Mm -hmm. But it was around in that time. Mm -hmm. And you had invited me to be on your show. I had never heard of you before then, and someone introduced us. Can't even remember who it was. I can't either. And um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't but matter. We got it connected. happened. It got, we mm -hmm. got connected. Mm -hmm. You invited me to be on your show. We were about to do a, a conference called A Season of the Suddenlies. And so you invited us on to talk about it, and we did. Mm -hmm. And um, we had an encounter that day. I'm, we I'm certainly sure did. you remember that. We did. First time I've ever had an angelic encounter of such. And it totally changed my life after that. And uh, things began to happen after that encounter. Now tell them about the angel. We were sitting there on the set and we were talking. Well, you had invited me to stay between the first session. You had went to... Um, change, get ready for your sh second uh, shooting. Mm -hmm. And so you said, why don't you stay and be a part of the audience? Mm -hmm. So I did. And so when you came out, you said, would you open up in prayer before we go on to the next program? So I said, sure, I'll do that. And so I began to pray. And all of a sudden, um, I began to prophesy, which is not normal for me to do in a setting like that. We went Fox 25, WXXV, in Gulfport, Mississippi. In Gulfport, Mississippi. In their studio. In, right inside the studio. And uh, you were getting ready to go on. And so the camera lady was behind the camera and she was ready to turn it on. And we began to uh, pray. And the Holy Spirit shows up in the room. And the room lit up, if you remember. It did. It literally it got illuminated. Mm -hmm. And uh, the camera uh, lady came out from behind mm -hmm. the the uh, camera. And say, what's going on? She said, what is going on here? And if you remember, the um, uh, corporate office from Natchez was there mm -hmm. around the monitors outside, and they all backed up looking to see what happened because the room illuminated, and there was a golden um, angel showed up in the midst of the room, mm -hmm. and I looked, and the lady said, what is going on? What happened? And I said, the revival angel just showed up. Well, I've never heard of a revival angel in my whole life. I didn't read that in the scripture, but I do know angels are on assignment. Assignment. They're, mm -hmm. they're, you know, assigned to us. That's right. And uh, they are assigned to regions and uh, to bring about uh, a revival, revival. and uh, to protect us. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden, I see this angel and, and the Lord's, I'm um, speaking, he's a revival angel. Well, I didn't know, but and it was And we began to feel an anointing in the studio. It was, the anointing was evident. And so the prophecy was, I, ha I still have that prophecy. I uh, remember it to this day because it was so profound. It began a, uh, a perpetual uh, uh, motion into bringing revival to this region. And the Lord said, uh, I am releasing the fire of re revival over this region. You remember that? Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. said it will start in, in Alabama yeah. and it would go across the Mobile Bay, which mm -hmm. is known as the Bay mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And it was going down I-10 and it would begin to shoot off into uh, the most unusual places. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, wherever there's hungry people, because those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall, shall be, be filled. filled, those that's hungry for a move of God is going to see a move of God. 
And uh, so anyway, I could just see fire being shooting off into little small towns and revival just breaking out. And I'm seeing all this. Well, you know, after that, Brownsville revival broke out. Absolutely. It lasted Not a long time. Not Brownsville revival, but mm -hmm. uh, the, the Bay of the Holy Spirit yeah. revival mm -hmm. with John Kilpatrick's, mm -hmm. which was right at the Bay of the Holy Spirit, which was prophesied to him. I found out later when I began to share what God did in the studio that day. So it started at the studio at Fox 25 when we had that interview and it's been going on. You've been, you have been able to see angels now. Yes, um, everywhere I go, this same angel that we seen in the studio uh, follows me everywhere I go. Do we have that on tape? I went back and I got him to uh, uh, give me a tape of that. And um, I have, I've moved since then. I don't know exactly where it's at, but uh, all it shows is the brightness as the room lit up. Do you know the camera um, started on its own? She did not have the camera on. She was fixing to turn it on, and she said the camera actually uh, came on by itself. I remember that girl's name was Deborah, and it scared her too. <laughs> it did because it the did. camera came on. The and she camera didn't turn started it on. doing its own thing, and, and then that's when she came out and saw that the room was illum illuminated. And then she said, "What is going on?" And I think that may have helped her. I hope that I hope it helped her to get saved that day. <laughs> we did have a lady got saved that day. We did. We had a lady to get saved during that time. We were we were having live audience. Right. But that was a divine visitation from God that day. It was. After that, let me tell you what happened. The, um, the nations opened up to me because it was prophesied maybe 10 years before that I would go to the nations and that I got, the Lord was going to use me in Muslim uh, nations and the whole nation would be uh, one to the Lord. And so here you're wondering, how is God going to do that? That has to be a supernatural act of God. Only God can open the nations in that extreme to you. And so when I was on my way to Sierra Leone, I was called to go supernaturally. We had a lady raised from the dead in our church and um, a newspaper came out, which was uh, called the Remnant Newspaper, which does records um, revival all over the nation out of Mobile, Alabama, came to uh, interview our church about the woman that was raised from the dead in our church. And so the paper got to um, Nigeria, Wari, Nigeria, and um, Logos, Nigeria. And uh, I was, and it went from there to Sierra Leone. And so Sierra Leone, a pastor there, seen the newspaper that Greater Works Fellowship Church had a woman raised from the dead and he called and wanted me to come. And I prayed about it. So the Lord says, yes, go. He wanted me to go into the Muslim tribe there called the, um, uh, the Lo, uh, there's this Loco tribe and uh, the Limba tribe. So he said, will you come go to the Limba tribe? And I said, let me pray about it. He said, the, tri the tribal chief has called for you and he wants you to come and pray for him. Now he was a Muslim. He was blind and paralyzed. So on the way, we were in Nigeria, and the angel shows up there. That same angel? That same angel shows up. Now, I'm on my way to, to uh, West Africa, Sierra Leone, just come out of a civil war. I'd have never went if I'd have known they had just come out of civil, civil war. But anyway, we went out of the leading of the Holy Spirit. Revival broke out there because God did exactly what he said he was going to do. When he told me to go, he said, I'm going to open the chief's eyes and I'm going to heal him. And as the chief goes, the whole tribe's going to go. So as I went in to see the chief, the angel shows up again and revival does break out. The chief's eyes are opened. His, uh, he was paralyzed. He was healed and it went abroad. The, um, the TV studio was looking for me, stationed there, following us, wanting to know about this woman healer. And I said, I'm not the healer. Jesus is the healer. And so it went national, you know, that revival broke out. God is showed up in a Muslim country. Now, this chief that is Muslim said, I want to serve your God. Oh, my God. Now, I didn't your have God. to preach a salvation message because he just seen the kingdom of God. He said, when the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you, 
you see. It's come not. You're going to see the dead raised, the blind see, the lame walk. That's how you know that the kingdom of God is now come nigh unto you. And so, you know, if we're not seeing these things, where is the kingdom of God? Is this the supernatural? This is the supernatural. And God is restoring the supernatural. We're coming into a revival of supernatural signs, wonders, and miracles. What does supernatural mean? Well, supernatural, let me just give you a definition here. Okay. I've just written a book called Supernatural Invasion that is going to have all of these wonderful stories in it about the supernatural. But a supernatural, uh, supernatural means it's not able to be explained. <laughs> you can't explain it. In terms of the known law, which is governing, governors the universe, it is unexplainable, which makes it supernatural. It's also a manifestation that's attributed by a force beyond scientific understanding of the law of nature. Okay, so what you're telling me is that we're living in the age now of the supernatural. Yes, we are. And that means that we're going to see things take place that we can't explain because it's going to be supernatural from God. That's right. See, the Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things God has prepared for them that love him and are called according to his purpose. See, it's according to the power that worketh in you. God can do exceedingly abundantly above all you can even ask or think. So we're about to see things we've never seen. We're about to do things we've never done because we haven't done it in the power of the Holy Spirit, which causes the supernatural realm of heaven to come to earth. Who are the candidates for this? Who's going to be able? All, all believers. believers. But listen to this. A sign and a wonder are for the unbelievers. Signs and wonders. We're not looking for a sign. It said, these signs shall follow them, them that believe. believe, you see. So if we're walking in the supernatural, then the people who don't believe will see that. They will see it like this Muslim chief who never seen a miracle, never heard of Jesus Christ, has never heard the gospel. The gospel was preached to him that day. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God came nigh unto him, and he, his eyes was opened not only in the, the natural, natural but, in the but in the spiritual realm. He could see, he reached out, and he reached for me, and he looked at me, and he said, white woman, I was the first white white man or woman to ever walk on that um, uh, that earth over there. That let, me, let, me, let me just say something here. Um, there is something that's going on now that is happening that hadn't happened before for believers who are willing to take a leap of faith. Amen. The supernatural is just as common now as it was when Jesus walked the dusty roads of Galilee for those who have that kind of faith. Amen. See, there, we all have a measure of faith. Some of us have the gift of faith. Mm -hmm. If God said it, we believe it and we that's go right. for it. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I believe that's happening in your ministry. Amen. Uh, let me tell you something. That happened. I was healed of terminal cancer in 1985. And so every once in a while, that thing tries to come back on me. And um, I had, to, after about five years, uh, that nodule uh, not came back, went back to my doctor. He said, let's go and have it examined. And I said, well, I'm not receiving this. See, you can't receive. If the come devil on. sends you come a on. COD package, you can't you just take send it. it back to Send him. it back. Don't send even it back take to it. Sender. And so mm. he said, I want you to go and have this um, uh, tested. So I did, and I went back to the um, hospital and had another mammogram. And so the technician takes the film, she puts it up on the the uh, light, mm -hmm. and she said, there's the tumor right there. And I looked at her, I said, I am not receiving that. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, mm -hmm. I am healed. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, she had circled it with mm -hmm. a black marker mm -hmm. pen, and there it was in plain daylight. 
And I said, I'm not receiving that. You see, I did not receive it. Mm -hmm. And something happened in the realm of the spirit that became supernatural. Mm -hmm. And she looked and all of a sudden there was no tumor on that screen. Mm -hmm. And she jerked that film off and she said, you stay right here. She said, this film has just malfunctioned. And I said, no, ma'am, that film has not malfunctioned. I said, a miracle just happened. A miracle. And a I, miracle. it was in the making because I'm not receiving receiving this report. So whose report are we going to believe? I hate to cut you off right now because it's getting hot up in here. Woo! But yes. we got to take a break. We, you stay right there. Don't I you am. go anywhere. Oh, yes. You stay there too. We'll be right back. Have you always wanted to own your own business by becoming a licensed cosmetologist? If so, now is the time to enroll at Unlimited Cosmetology School, LLC, located at 102 Broad Street in Hattiesburg. That's right, learn how to become a professional cosmetologist by acquiring 1,500 clock hours in 12 or 16 months. Now is the time for open enrollment. If you're interested, contact Lisa Daniels by calling 601-336-7256 or 601-408-2650. My name is Sandra Hancock with Sandra Hancock Ministries, and I want to take this opportunity to invite you all to one of our powerful conferences in a city near you. Our conferences in Laurel are the second Saturday of each month from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. at The Gathering Place, 3227 Audubon Drive. For more information about our ministry, visit our website, sandrahancock.org, or call our 1-800 number, 800-579-7350. Pastor Lelis Keys and First Lady Mary Keys invite you to join them in worship at Church on the Move, 1604 Congress Street in Laurel. Services are Sunday mornings at 11 and Tuesday night prayer and Bible study at 7 p.m. Please call 601-382-5161 for more information or find us on Facebook. We look forward to meeting you and worshiping the Lord together. We're talking about the supernatural, supernatural miracles, divine intervention, unexplained miracles. Unexplained. That's the kind of God that we serve. Yes, indeed. You know, there was a prophet at your church Sunday night. And one thing he said was we could pray that God would change our DNA and renew our youth. I believe we're living in an hour now. Think about Caleb. How old was he when he got over there and he said he was going to go take his mountain? He was 80 years old. Yes, he was. I believe God is getting ready to use people of our age like never before. Amen. Do you agree? Does your spirit I agree with that? I do agree with that. Yes, I do. I've seen it. Hannah, I've seen it. The Lord spoke to me in London, England. I went uh, there to uh, uh, do a revival, a healing revival. And there was a woman from um, Canada that showed up there. And uh, she was crippled, couldn't hardly walk. She mm -hmm. was in a wheelchair. And um, the Lord spoke to me. Now this woman was not uh, a Christian. She was not serving God. And the Lord told me to pray for her and I prayed for this woman. He said, I want you to release the eagle anointing upon her. Now, she's like 79 years old and um, had to have assistance everywhere she went. I prayed an eagle anointing. Now, listen, I've ne I, don't know, I didn't understand these things. God's calling us to do things. We, we, we don't, don't have any idea right. what we're doing. Absolutely. We just do it, and we, An he obedience. gives us revelation later. Absolutely. Right at the time, we don't have a clue, but we'll get revelation about it later. So I said, okay, Lord. He said, I'm going to renew her youth as the eagle right now. She's going to run and not be weary. She's going to walk and not faint. I'm going to renew her youth. And within five seconds of praying that prayer, that woman, her youth was renewed. She looked 20 years younger in front of everybody there. Praise God. She got up out of the wheelchair. 
She's no longer in a wheelchair. Now, this has been some five years ago. She's not walking in a wheelchair. She's not walking with assistance. She is preaching the gospel. Praise God. She is uh, uh, ministering to older people. She called me on the phone. She said, you've got to come to Canada. She said, when I got back, because I prophesied, I said, you will do things that you couldn't do uh, for the past 20 years. Wow. You're going to garden again. You're going to shop again. You're going to drive again. People are going to be amazed when you get renewed back. Renewed youth. Her renewed youth. Well, she gets back. She didn't have any assistance on the plane. She walked on the plane. She walked out. She went home. She's gardening. She's doing all the things that she did 20 years before. Her neighbors, her friends couldn't believe it. She calls me on the phone. She said, Pastor Lee, can you come to Canada? Everybody wants you to pray that eagle's anointing. Praise she God. She booked me. I went to Canada. We had one of the most awesome meetings in her home. She's become an evangelist. Now, she's not in a church, per se, evangelist. She's evangelizing She's traveling. Okay, okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, her yeah. very life, that became a living testimony. Well, I tell you what now, Apostle Pat Lee, we need to do something in the hub city. We need to call people together who are getting old, feeling tired, feeling uh, despondent, um, feel like that their time is about over for doing the work that God has called yes, them to do, yes. in, even in the natural. That's right. And we need to have a DNA revival. Come on. That's right. A DNA revival, renewing your youth. That's right. Because the one thing about it is, when God makes you whole, that means mind, body, soul, and spirit. That's exactly right. And that's what we need. That's right. I want you to pray that over me. I want to renew my youth. Amen. Of course, I feel pretty good my age. You know what I'm saying? Amen. But I want to be super. I want to feel super good. Well, he wants you to be in divine health. Yes. He wants us to be in divine health. Yeah. And, and you know, the the world will tell you, you know, you're getting older. Yes, you got to slow gotta, down. You got to slow down. You yes. got, you're going to have all these eight ailments and you can expect this to start happening. Let me tell you something. You begin to speak to your DNA. You begin to call it to line up with the Word of God. Come on now. Amen. Come on now. He will do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. God will do even more than we can ask or think according to the power that work within us. When you begin to speak, there's power in those words. And we need to be begin to speak to our bodies just like I did that day in that, in that hospital. I'm not receiving this. And, and they didn't find it anymore. It went It away. was gone. And also, I want to share with the audience, when I met Pat Lee, Back in 2003 or 2004, she was 100 pounds heavier than she is now. Look at this woman now. Mm -hmm. God is even concerned about our weight. That's right. This is ministering to somebody out there today. You've gained Amen. so much weight until you feel, you feel like there's no need of me trying to lose any weight because I'm too far gone. That's right. Is it too late? No, it's not. It's really not. See, if we're going to do what God's called us to do, we got to get our body, this temple, this temple. of the Holy Spirit, we got to get it in healthy. That's right. We got to eat right. We got to exercise. That's right. And we got to speak to it, you know, right. and, and believe that what the scripture says, it's his will that we prosper, be in health. Health, even, even as, as our soul, soul prospers. prospers. That's the threefold blessings of God. That's he right. wants you to prosper in every area, area of, of your, your life. life. If you're overweight, you're going to have high blood pressure. Yes. You're going to have arthritis. Mm -hmm. You're going to have all kind of things that's going to slow you down right. and take you out because the devil comes but to steal, kill, kill, and destroy. destroy. And if you don't decide to take charge of your mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. the devil will destroy you. He'll take you out. He will take you out. Mm -hmm. You will not have that, live that abundant life. And we need the abundant, to walk in the abundant life, the That's threefold right. blessings of God. That's right. He wants us to prosper in every area, area. of mm -hmm. our life. And mm -hmm. that's in your body. Nothing lacking, nothing missing. Nothing lacking, nothing missing. Mm -hmm. But you have to take control. Yes. You've got to do something. I had to take control of myself or I wasn't going to live to fulfill my 
God-given right. destiny. Right. And I go to the nations. And it, it had gotten where I couldn't even take a, a flight to Sierra Leone, which is 24 hours. My legs would swell. My blood pressure would go up. I could hardly sit there. You know, I could wa hardly walk when I got there because we have to walk so many uh, places. We have to, you know, there's no transportation to get into mm -hmm. some of these tribal lands. Mm -hmm. We have to walk in there or either mm -hmm. get on the back of a motorcycle or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't healthy. My body was out of shape. I had to get it in shape. And so I had to do something. And so I made up my mind, I am going to take charge of my life. Well, I tell you, somebody's watching this program. We have, have a couple of minutes left. You just heard her testimony. If he does it for her, he will do it for you. Amen. It's time for you to step up to the plate and take charge. This is your mind. This is your body. Yes. God gave it to you. He's not going to do for you what you can do, what he has commissioned you to do for yourself. If you're sick, if you're overweight, if you are oppressed, if you are depressed, it doesn't matter what is going on in your life. This is your time of destiny. Amen. It is. This is time for you to come forth and be who God called you to be and stop letting other people assign your position to you in life. Know that That's God right. made come you to on. be who he wants yes, you to exactly. be. You can exactly. do all things through Christ Amen. who strengthens you. Stop saying I could never do that. God wired you in such a way for you to be able to take this, Amen. to do this, Amen. to go forward. Amen. We have to align ourselves with the will of God, the purpose of God, and the plan of God. And I'm telling you, Hannah, what God is doing right now, He is divine aligning us into His perfect will. And if you are not saved today, did you hear what she just said? One minute left in the show. It's time for him to get saved. Yes, amen. Let's pray. Amen. Father, we thank you today that you allowed us to come together for such a time as this. Somebody in this audience is not saved today. And this is a good time for them to give their lives yes, to yes, you, God. Yes. And so Apostle Pat and I joined our hands and our hearts and our minds yes. and our faith together today and say, save them, Lord. Bring yes, them in, God. Bring them in. In the bring name of in. Jesus, Holy if Spirit, you are not saved, in. Repeat after me, Lord God, Lord God I, acknowledge I acknowledge that you died for my sins and you rose for my sins. And you rose for my sins. Come into my life. Come into my life. Save me. Save me. And fill me with your spirit. And fill me with your and spirit. And I'll live for you and I'll live the, for rest you. the rest of my I life. I thank you, God. I thank you. That, God, right, now, that right now I am saved. I am saved. And my name is written in the and Lamb's my Book name of is Life. Written in the Lamb's Book of in Life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, Amen. if you pray that prayer, you are just as saved as we are. And it has been a blessing until this time next week. I am Hannah Hopkins with Lifting You High, your TV minister, saying, you be blessed. This is Gerald Strawberry. Congratulations to Hannah Hopkins TV ministry. God bless you guys. Continue the great work, all for the kingdom of God. Facing the death of a loved one can be one of the most challenging moments you'll ever face. The staff at McSwain and Myers Funeral Service are here to help ease that burden. We specialize in giving our families the utmost professional care in their time of need. We provide non-traditional funeral planning from the pre-arrangements of the funeral to the family repast. We also offer discounts to families of fallen first responders and military. Let our family service your family at McSwain and Myers Funeral Services. Pastor Leela's Keys and First Lady Mary Keys invite you to join them in worship at Church on the Move, 1604 Congress Street in Laurel. Services are Sunday mornings at 11 and Tuesday night prayer and Bible study at 7 p.m. Please call 601-382-5161 for more information or find us on Facebook. We look forward to meeting you and worshiping the Lord together.